shop. My name is Patrick. I run the marketing department here at Art Storefronts. Been doing that going on six years and change now, uh, which means I've been spending six years and change trying to solve the problem that all of you guys are trying to solve and figure out, which is how do you grow a successful art or photography business in today's day and age of modern marketing? Uh, stated another way, how do you go from being a hobbyist to an actual business that pays you uh, for your creations? Uh, in addition to that, I've been running three of these sessions a week since before the pandemic, so a year and change now, and you do that long enough, and pattern recognition becomes a thing. I have talked to more artists and photographers on a week-in, week-out basis than I have to imagine just about anybody alive on this planet. Um, so I've seen it all, heard it all, and I bring that up to say I want this session to be valuable for you guys. And so whether you ever decide to do business with art storefronts, I do want you to leave with some actionable intel uh, that you can use, that you can bolt into your business and start growing it and getting it to where you want it to be. And as a final, um, you know, we have a little bit over 5,700 customers at Art Storefronts now, and we study their data very, very closely. Who's selling the most originals? Who's selling the highest price originals? Uh, who's selling the cheapest originals with the highest volume? Uh, who's selling the most commissions? How are they doing that? What marketing sources are they using? Who's selling the most prints or metal prints or canvas prints or paper prints or frame prints? Uh, who's the best on Instagram and why? What are they doing? Who's the best on Facebook? Who's driving the most traffic? And so you do that, you do that religiously, and it gives you a pretty interesting data set that I think sort of sets us apart from perhaps other outfits out there. All we do is cater to artists and photographers, and all we do is see their data, and all we do is pair the ones that are selling the most with what is actually working in the modern marketing landscape today uh, to sell art and photography. So that's what we do. Um, agenda for the session today, I'm gonna start with a little presentation, sort of how we look at the art and photography markets, how we, um, some things that we think that you need to sort of agree with um, our, our way of analyzing, looking at the market of how you need to set yourself up such that you do want to succeed. Um, these are the things that you need to pay attention to. And, and sort of this presentation sits on top of everything that we do. You kind of need to hear it, uh, be exposed to its ideas, understand them, and ideally nod your head on them and say like, yeah, that totally sounds right. From there, um, to find out more about like what we do uh, to get a tour of the entire solution, the website, software, the marketing, the support, all the plans, all the bells and whistles that we have, we do the demo process. And so what you're able to do is request a demo, we'll throw links all over the place, and the demo is essentially like, you know, for lack of a better term, it's like the test drive, right? You get, you get behind the wheel, you get to see everything, play with all the buttons, open the sunroof, all that jazz. Uh, and then you can decide whether or not it is a solution for you uh, or not. So we'll talk more about that as we roll along. Um, some quick programming notes. As I sort of roll through the presentation, uh, I'm going to be covering a bunch of things. I'm going to be referencing some videos. Uh, there's going to be some reports, uh, some PDFs and the like. What we'll do once the session sort of ends and is over, we will send you an email in like an hour or so after. And it'll be a web page. It'll have the video replay embedded at the top. So if you miss some of it, um, you want to rewatch some of it, whatever the case may be, you can do that. In addition to that, all the links will just be right underneath it. So don't feel like you need to take notes or, you know, what was that thing? What was that mention? All of it will be on that web page, and then you can just click the links and do it at your leisure. Uh, it'll be in your email box. So in addition to that, as we roll along through the presentation, there is a chat box at the bottom of your Zoom. And what you can do with that chat box is if you've got a question and – you're like, I just want it out of my head. You can throw it into the chat. Um, number one, my team might answer it in real time. Number two, um, when we get to the Q&A portion of the session, which is just directly after the presentation, um, I'll scroll through the chat and I'll pick those questions up and, and answer them. If you're one of the ones that are watching on the socials, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube or Twitter, uh, I see your questions as well. Uh, it's very easy to answer those, so you just have to leave a comment if you've got a question. And when we get to the Q&A portion, I will get right into this. So we start off with the presentation. Is that everything? Is that all my notes? I think so. Um, yeah, so let's get into the presentation. So I've created, to sort of explain things, what I call the art selling pyramid. And I call it the path to successful art business in 2021 and beyond. And it's, it's a pyramid because I stole it from Maslow's hierarchy of needs. 
and I'm not sure if you're familiar with this or not, but it's a pyramid and the concept is it's got a bunch of blocks on it and you need to sort the bottom blocks before you move up to the next block, before you move up to the next block. So in Maslow's, you've got, you know, the quotidian daily needs, which are the physiological needs. We all need to eat. We all need to sleep. We all need to do that daily. Uh, once you've got that sorted, then you can worry on safety and security, a roof over your head, getting fit, making money, love, belonging, esteem, self-actualization, uh, and finish the whole thing off. So I give you the art selling pyramid, okay? And the bottom block is attention. And attention is the currency of the land that we live in. Uh, I know conclusively, uh, without even having to ask any of you, because I do this week in, week out, and talk to hundreds and thousands of you, is every single solitary person on this call has an, an attention problem. Every single solitary person on this call needs more eyeballs on their art or their photography if they want to try to build a business uh, that can actually provide income for themselves and their families. So <coughs> understanding this, understanding that attention is a currency of the land is so, so important. And no different than Maslow's uh, bottom block being physiological eating and sleeping is something that we have to do daily. If you want to have a successful business, focusing on attention by which I mean getting more eyeballs to your art and photography, which in a word, yes, is marketing, is the single solitary most important thing that you need to be working on. And, you know, I can't understate that enough. And a couple of different weird ways to come at it to kind of give it some better teeth is I wish that we lived in a world where the best art or the best photography wins. Uh, we don't. The best art or photography that gets seen wins because if it never gets seen, it never sells. So we live in an age and an era where it's not a meritocracy on how good of an artist you are, how good of a photographer you are. It is a meritocracy on how good of a marketer you are. You can't even get anyone to look at your art or photography until you work on the attention problem, until you solve it. And yet another way, taking it out of like the art or the photography industry and sort of underscoring how important attention is, how it is the currency of the land that we live in is, if I asked you, who are some of the most powerful women in the entire world? How would you respond to that question? It's an open-ended question, right? And I answer that question by saying, it is the Kardashian slash Jenner sisters. Now, we can all make an argument about how these women went to acquire all of this attention. What we cannot make an argument about is what they've been, what they've been able to do with it after they have. And I'm not talking about the shows or the sponsorships. I'm talking about how each of these gals has a bajillion million dollar business um, selling whatever it is. And the reason that they do is because they understand the currency of the land that we live in, which is attention. Stated yet another way, as terrible as this is, if any of these plastically, surgically enhanced women uh, decided to start painting tomorrow or decided to start becoming a photographer tomorrow, uh, they could be painting stick figures, they could be taking out of focus iPhone shots, and they would likely have a $10 million a year print business year one. And that is because attention is a currency of the land. Critically, critically important to understand that. Um, all artists, all photographers have marketing problems. By and large, as a blanket statement, all artists and photographers tend to suck at marketing. And you guys definitely don't want to do it, and I'm definitely aware of that. Um, but it's, it's the biggest problem. Once we sort the attention piece, once we start working on that daily, then uh, the next block up has an outer portion and inner portion. The outer portion is one, you have to understand the business model, and two, you have to start building a collector's list. And the business model is you have to sell direct. There can be absolutely no one in between you and your end customer, okay? You need to be able to sell direct such that you retain the information on your customers such that you can market to them in perpetuity. You're gonna potentially be selling your art or your photography to these people for the rest of your life. And if you look at your industry traditionally, the gallery, the brick and mortar gallery model is utterly, totally, and completely exploitative. And I'm not talking about the 50-50 split, which is exploitative in and of itself. I'm talking about the fact that no galleries, brick and mortar retail galleries, which many of you have likely grown up selling through, um, they don't give you information on the collectors. They don't give you information on the people that purchase your work. Why do you think that is? Because they would be out of business if they did. It is the single solitary most important thing an art or a photography business can have full stop. And, you know, I took originally the concept of a collector list and how important it is from this book. It's a great book. Don't be a starving artist. It's by Wyland. He's the whale guy. Um, why would you want to take his advice? Why would you want to buy this book? One, you'd want to buy the book because look at how thin it is. It's awesome. Super short chapters. 
uh, but he's the best-selling artist in the United States. Apparently, apparently, it's not even close. Uh, he knows what he's talking about. He didn't get there by accident. He didn't get there because he's the best artist. He defines a collector as someone that will purchase in upwards of eight plus pieces of art from him over the course of a lifetime. And so he keeps getting better, creating new work, raising his prices. The collectors go along for the ride and they just keep buying and buying and buying year after year after year. And I've been doing this for long enough now and studying my customers' data for long enough now that I've seen the utter, total, and complete power of what a collector list represents to your business. It is either the number one, excuse me, number one or number two most important metric uh, that defines the revenue potential of an art or photography business in my estimation. What ends up happening is you come out with the new series and you come out with the new series on a Wednesday, you're gonna release it to the public. On Sunday night, you send it to your collectors. Uh, hey collectors, patrons, thank you so much for your continued support. I have a brand new series that I'm gonna be releasing to the public on Wednesday. Uh, because you supported me in the past, because I love you for that, uh, I wanted to show you this collection before anyone else gets to see it. And what happens is the collector list buys some portion of the work before you even show it to the public. And it starts out small um, in terms of volume and percentage. And your job is just to constantly grow it, right? Like if you come out with a series that has 10 pieces in it and you email your collector list and you sell one, okay, 10% of what you created uh, is automatically sold to your collectors without having to do anything just because you have a collector list and because you've kept it up and because you understand the business model. And I've seen situations with our customers where it goes as high as 60, 70, 80%. And you eventually want to get to a place where it's 100%, right? That's the goal. Um, not many obtain that, but that's the goal nonetheless. And, you know, another way to think about it is you guys are all essentially just commissioned salespeople. If you create the work and you go out and pound the pavement and do what it takes to sell it, you get paid. But if you don't, you don't get paid. Nothing sells. You are a commissioned salesperson. Well, when you have a collector list, you go from being a commissioned salesperson to a commissioned salesperson with a base salary, okay? It starts out small, maybe it's 10 grand a year, and then it goes up from there. And essentially, the collector list ensures that you get paid just for creating. It ensures that you get paid just for getting out of bed in the morning. And the percentages, like I said, go up and up and up, and all you have to do is write an email to these wonderful folks and show them the images on a web page, and they will purchase from you. But this is only possible if you're maintaining the data on who is purchasing your work. And it's why the gallery model is so utterly, totally, and completely flawed. All right, we're working on our attention. We understand the business model. We are building a collector list. Um, there's three ways to sell art and photography. There's three. I believe every single solitary artist needs to be aware of all three. Every photographer needs to be aware of all three. And then you need to deploy all three uh, dependent on the situation, what is the most effective. The number one way, the best way, you guys all know this, it's in person, face to face. It always has been, it always will be. That'll never not be the best way to sell art. The problem is, is we are all of us geographically fixed on this planet, right? We all have to sleep. Uh, we are incapable of having 15 conversations at once. So the next way, the number two way, is on your website. You need to have your art on a website with the ability to take payment to solve for those situations of people not geographically in your town and to solve for those situations when you are asleep and to solve for those situations when you have potentially 15 people uh, uh, interested in your art all at the same time. So the website takes care of that. The newest way, the... Next greatest way, the most interesting advancement to selling art and photography in forever is exactly what we're doing right now. It is via live video in either a one-to-one -one fashion or one-to-many. Let me give you the one-to-one -one and then we can get into the one-to-many. Let's say that I'm following Justin Cooper down there on Instagram and I see a piece that he posted on Instagram and I'm like, wow, that thing's kind of interesting, I like it. So I send Justin a DM on Instagram and I'm like, Justin, I really like this piece. Um, I just did an addition on my house and so I've got some wall space I need to take care of. I was wondering, do you think we could jump into a Zoom call and maybe talk about some of the pieces? You could let me know some of the pricing. And Justin goes, no problem, Patrick, got you covered. Here's the Zoom link, let's do it Friday. We jump into a Zoom call. Justin starts showing me the work, talking about his inspiration, talking about the media types, talking to me about pricing, 
uh, talking to me what the opportunities are, what's available. And the next thing you know, he gets the sale over the line. That is the one to one fashion, okay? What about the one to many, right? And that's this concept where the live art show comes in, okay? And this is a buddy of mine. He's been a customer for a long time. We've worked together on a bunch of different marketing initiatives. And here is the concept of the live art show. You have one artist in his garage studio. You have some works. Uh, you are streaming live to the various different socials. Uh, you are bringing comments in in real time. Um, so people are asking questions about the pieces. You're responding in real time. You attempt to sell the works. This particular gentleman in a two-day period, uh, in the middle of the pandemic, no less, so had two shows. I think it was over 15 or 20 days, something like that. And he sold 62 pieces for $30,000 Canadian. And we saw that, and it's like, whoa, whoa. That's, that's incredible. Like, how did he do that? That's amazing. Was this a one-off? Is this something that he did, or is this something that we can duplicate, right? And so what we've done since then is literally run hundreds of these with hundreds of different people in all kinds of different niches. And I love this show, this one. Her name's Meg. She's a painter from Kansas City. And she was moving from one studio into another. And so, you know, she had a bunch of these color studies and sketches uh, that made up part of new pieces and such. And during the course of this move, she decided to put all of this stuff into a sale, an online art sale. And there were 82 pieces in the show. The, the show was going to run on a Wednesday. And you remember what I said earlier about the collector list? She emailed her collector list and her collectors before the live art show even ran. She sold 46% of the show to her collectors, which is staggering. Since then, we've run one after another after another with different artists, different niches, different styles. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Getting over a cold here. Different personalities. Uh, photographers. You know, this is Carol. She specializes in wild horses, and so we've run shows with her. And we keep running one after another, after another, after another to get better at them, to understand the trade craft, understand the ins and outs. Uh, does wearing white gloves make an impact? Uh, this is a photographer uh, named Karen Hutton. And we just keep running them and running them and running them because full stop, they are the future of art. We actually ran one last night um, with the Shira here. And she did a great job. She sold a whole ton. I'll actually show something uh, that dovetails with her show. But you know, lest you think that it's just us trying to figure this out, let me just tell you the whole art marketing world uh, is trying to figure this all out at the same time. And it's like, there's not a lot of reports in your industry. Um, this is one of the big ones that comes out on a yearly basis. It's called the Art Market Report, and it's by Art Basel and UBS. And I'm gonna send this to you. I think it's totally a worthwhile report, worthwhile to check out. Um, you don't even have to read the whole report. Yes, I accept your annoying cookies. You c they have this like special web page portion of it. And I love looking at this. And I go to online sales, right? And I quote, and oh, by the way, as a disclaimer, you know, Art Basel, UBS, they're only surveying the data on this report, the top 5% of artists in the world, right? So it's sort of the pros. But the data still holds true. And I love this quote behind me, which is, Chapter five looks at the online art market and the rapid evolution in sales in 2021. The chapter shows how the dealer sector shifted sales online in 2020 and at the development of online viewing rooms, OVRs, and it goes on to talk about uh, the sheer volume of art that was sold in these OVRs. Online viewing rooms, OVRs, are a fancy way of saying a Zoom call, no different than what we are doing right now, okay? It is either the artist and the artist agent or the gallery owner on one side of the Zoom call with the work, on the other side is the high net worth individual sat back on their couch and they are shown the art and they get to talk it through and they get to decide to buy it. And so it doesn't matter if you are at the just getting started, you sold nothing portion, or if you're at the very, very top, the rarefied atmosphere, like the top 5%, you know, well over six figures a year. Um, everybody is trying to figure out how to leverage, okay, live video uh, in this format of a live art show to move, uh, to move work. And let me tell you, there's there's abstractions to it, right? My same buddy here in the middle of COVID, so this was, what's the date on this one? July 24th, 2020, so uh, almost a year ago to the day. Um, he had a show and they allowed him to run it. And obviously everyone had to wear masks and social distance. This was still in the pandemic and the lockdowns were raging and not a lot of people could come. 
it was isolated to one particular part in Canada. I can't remember what this one this one was specifically, but he had the show, did the best he could. Next day, turned the cameras on, walked through the gallery, okay, like you were there. You can see he's got his glass of wine in his hand. He's talking about the show. It's no, well, it's no different. It's about as close as actually being there at the show walking and people are asking questions uh, and people can see which works have red dots on them already and have sold. Uh, and certain people are asking for pricing and certain people are sending him messages saying, I'll take it. And he managed to move more of the show inventory via a live art show that he ran in a gallery. So we believe quite conclusively, Art Storefronts is a business that this is the future of selling art and photography full stop. Uh, we, the results that we are getting are absolutely staggering. Uh, we are investing in it significantly. We are working out the trade craft and we are obviously teaching our customers how to do it. But it is without question one of the things I am most passionate about period because I have never seen the volume of art and photography that is moving as a result of this. And you know, I showed you, this is, this is one we ran last night, right? She had never run one before at all. Uh, her name is Shira. She lives here in California where I do. She has some interesting work. And, you know, one of the new initiatives, one of the new things that our software does is we built a brand new page uh, on our website just for live art shows. Okay. And, you know, this is part and parcel for like how the mechanics work and how this entire thing goes down. So here's her show. Here are all the various different pieces. And she ran this last night for the first time ever. Okay. And this was her excess inventory in this particular case. And you can see as I scroll down, look at how many pieces she sold. I mean, look at how much of the show is sold already. And you can see the little sold banners that come up. And what's interesting is that we've run so many of these already that we figured out like, wait a minute, we have to make these things as easy as possible. So how do you make it as easy as possible? I love this page, it's my own creation. You essentially drop all the images on a folder. You give them all a number, a price, a title. There is a buy now button at the bottom of every one. There is an instant checkout drawer on the right-hand side where they put in their credit card, their billing address, their city, state, zip, and they click pay now. The transaction is sorted. This minute the transaction is sorted, yeah, and they can use GPay, Apple Pay, it goes to sold, it knocks out the buy now button. And so while you're running the live art show, you have the ability to instantaneously capture these sales. They're automatically toggled to sold and you just keep moving through. And after the live art show portion is done, you now have a page that all of these pieces live on, a page that took you, no joke, 30 minutes to create. All you had to do was just title all of the pieces uh, and people can come back and watch it. And if they missed it, here Link it is. Right there. It's, it's embedded on the page. Um, they can watch the show, the people that missed it. Yeah. They can and instantaneously my, scroll um, down. That's a little annoying. You can instantaneously scroll down and say, oh, great, that one's still available. I'm going to buy it. Um, this is perfectly my size, boom, pay now, you know, if all my data was in. So it's the future. It's the future of selling art and photography full stop. So we're working on our attention. We understand the business model. We're building a collector list. We are deploying the three ways to sell art on a regular basis where applicable. The top block of the pyramid, you guys, is everything else. Have a, have a retail gallery that's working for you? Fantastic. Keep it going. But in addition, uh, in addition to all of the other stuff that you're doing, uh, so to the show and fair circuit, so to online galleries, maybe you have something like that working, but that's the pyramid and it's critical you understand it because it is, it is the number one way to ensure going forward, you are actually building a business where you control the rules and you have the greatest upside potential exposure to actual revenue, to stop being a hobbyist or to take your business where it is now to the next level. Maybe it's from a side hustle to full time, um, or maybe you're, you keep it as a side hustle until you retire and then you want it to provide for you. Well, if you understand this pyramid, the odds, the cards are stacked in your favor to actually get there. If you don't, it becomes very difficult. It's like going into a fight with one or two of your arms tied behind your back. Uh, it's no way to win. I wrap things up with perspective. You know, I've been doing this, like I said, for a year now. I've talked to so many people over the years. I can't begin to tell you what do I know conclusively that every single solitary week, there are people in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, sometimes even 90s on these calls uh, asking for advice, um, talking about what they're doing in their business, talking about what used to be working and what's not working. And I look at that and it's staggering. And number one, you have your entire life to get that pyramid right, okay? you have the rest of your life, and in many cases, it's decades and decades and decades of selling art and selling photography. And you have the time, okay, to get this model right, 
to start working on getting attention on a daily basis and learning everything that that is, to uh, uh, understand the three ways to sell art and to start deploying them, and to working on all that consistently, which no one ever does. And if you do that and you get that right, you actually start building a business where you control all the rules. And when you have the perspective in your head that you have decades left to be doing this, everything becomes clear. You've got the time, right? You've got the time to pull this off. So that's my presentation. I'm sticking to it. And, you know, one of the other terrifying things that I'll say, having done this all the way through COVID all the way up till now is I get to talk to people week in, week out that have been really successful artists. They've been really successful photographers, but they didn't understand that pyramid and they didn't understand the rules and they didn't keep a collector list and they've never worked on their marketing and they've been reliant on other people to sell for them. And then what happened when the pandemic hit? Boom, all of those things were turned off. They had zero control over any of it. You just had to sit and wait it out. You had no one to market to. You didn't have a collector list. You don't even know how to market. You've never even tried. And that's a terrifying position to be in. It's terrifying. In many cases, you have people that have had extremely successful businesses, but they didn't control the distribution sources. They didn't control the revenue sources. They were not selling direct. And, you know, I think, if anything, the pandemic has underscored how important it is to get that pyramid right. And for the artists that did, the pandemic and the corresponding year in change that it represented uh, was one of the biggest years of sales they've ever had in their business. Uh, for a great many of our customers, that was the case. And that is just so, so important, so critically important because, you know, I am an optimist. I think, I think we're going to be okay. At the same time, I cannot make it 20 minutes you're looking at a news site or two minutes two seconds without more doom and gloom about the delta variant and what's going to happen and i live in southern california and one you know one county north of me is la county and it's like they're masking up already again and it's like okay that's terrifying that's in the middle of summer what's going to happen in the middle of winter and are we going to go right back into a scenario where any of the revenue sources that you have for your art or your photography uh, that, that, that are retail, local based, fair and show based, are those just gonna disappear into thin air again? And if they do, uh, uh, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Is it gonna be the exact same scenario as last time? Wait it out and hope on a prayer? Or are you gonna start taking your marketing seriously? Are you gonna get your, your art up on a website? <coughs> Sorry, I've had a cold for like 14 days. Not COVID, got tested by the way, not COVID. Um, you know, is this whole scenario gonna repeat itself again? It, 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 uh, it, it's, it's looking that way, terrifyingly so. So the pyramid is critically important, absolutely critically important that you get it right. You have the time to get it right. You have the time to get it right, to get going, to get your stuff up on a website and start marketing because guess what else is right around the corner? Q4. And for, the, for the, those not in the know, um, I got my handy countdown timer, 89 days left, right? Till the start of Q4, which is October 1st. Uh, why is Q4 important? Oh, I didn't have my screen share on. That's lame. There's my fancy counter. Uh, 89 days. Can I see it over my fat head? Oh, good. You can. Um, till the start of Q4. Why is Q4 important? Traditionally, in non-COVID times, Q4, about we, which I mean specifically the last three months of the year, for the majority of our customers in pre-COVID times, um, many would sell more in Q4 alone okay, than they would all the other three quarters combined. And Q4 is Black Friday, Cyber Monday, the holiday buying season, all of that wrapped into one. And guess what? It's coming. And it is a marathon. And if you were going to run a marathon, uh, how ahead of time would you start training on the little two and three and four and five mile runs, right? You'd probably start training immediately. This is no different, okay? And it's going to sound cynical and self-serving, but look, I don't care if you sign up with us. You need to understand Q4 is coming. You need to get your art up on a website. You need to start marketing immediately. And if you do that, you put yourself in a position uh, to best capitalize on everything that Q4 uh, will bring and in, 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 in usher in. So it, it's probably going to be the biggest one ever. And I base that on the fact that, you know, COVID is going gonna, is gonna to play into it again. And, you know, art and photography uh, in sharp contrast to restaurants and bars and amusement parks and concert venues was a huge, huge winner uh, in COVID, right? Everything was a huge, huge winner, home decor based, right? Because we're all spending so much time in our homes. Everyone is starting to, you know, get sick enough of their white walls to actually do something. They're sick of their Zoom backgrounds looking terrible and they're like, okay, I need some art. So, 
if it comes around again, it's going to be a big one. Um, and we want you guys to be prepared. We want you to be ready. Step one is understanding it. Step two is like, okay, what action are you going to take to get yourself prepared? And God forbid that Delta variant kicks up and we're all locked in again. Uh, are you going to be in a position where you can actually sell art during that time? And we want you to be. So open it up to Q&A now. Um, how does the Q&A work? If you're one of the brave ones with your camera on and you raise your hand, I'll see that you have a question. I can unmute you. But if you look at the bottom of your Zoom bar, and sometimes you need to mouse over it, or if it's on a phone, you thumb over it, there's a reactions button. And the reactions button, it's like a little face with a plus next to it. It allows you to raise your hand, digitally speaking. And you can see I just did it um, on mine if you have the participants window open. And <coughs> by doing that, it lets me know you have a question. Excuse me. And I can unmute you, uh, bring you in, uh, and you can ask a question about anything you like. Um, if you don't want to turn your camera on and you don't want to be on video, trust me, it's all good. I hate being on video. Uh, I would never be on video if it was left to me. So you can certainly ask via audio. Um, you can also, like I said, throw questions in the chat. Like, Sue, I see yours. What about the calendars? We can talk about the calendars in just a second. Um, also, if you're watching on the socials, like I said, uh, I'm seeing those uh, questions. And yes, Kat, you can watch the replay as soon as it's done. Um, and then what was this question? Um, why do you differentiate artists from photography? I don't, um, Lynn. I, I, I call them both. But we live in a, you know, I think an artist is an artist, obviously. I think a photographer is an artist as well at the same time. It's a nomenclature issue. Some people get really bent out of shape if you don't mention both. Um, I've experienced that time and time again. And let me tell you, it's extremely annoying because instead of just having to type artist, you have to type artist and photographer every single solitary time. Photographer's got a lot of characters in it. So it's a mega annoying thing. But I don't differentiate between them, Lynn, but a lot of people get hung up on that. So that's just one of the things. Um, but Sue, I'm going to unmute you. What do you want to know specifically about the calendars? Let me Let me find you. And Sue, if you just want to hit the mic icon in the bottom left-hand corner, that'll, that'll, yep, gotcha. Am I? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. So I, I heard on one of your other things that you're doing calendars and yes. that they are, and that your uh, collectors can order one or two or three or whatever yes. amounts of artwork that you have on there. Yes. So how does that all work? I know you guys have been soliciting me and I haven't been responding. I'm very interested in mm -hmm. your thing. I'm just not ready because I know as soon as I am ready, I'm going to have to work on it. So, <laughs> yes, and I don't yes. have the time at the moment because I do all commissions. So I am very interested in the calendars. Mm -hmm. So I want to know what, what is your setup and, and, and all that. Yeah, it's great. Just out of curiosity, what are the commissions of? Are you doing portraits? Or are you doing landscape? Oh, all over the place. All I'm getting place. a little burned out. I'm literally all over the place. So like right now I'm working on a series of signs and um they're very intricate and mm -hmm. i do pet portraits i do everything i've done everything got it <laughs> i've done big guys yeah, yeah. everything but i'm getting a little burned out by it yeah so i am getting old so i know that i can't it's just one job after another job I know. and i need to do what you guys are telling me to do but i don't really do gallery artwork it's not that i don't do that kind of thing but i have an idea of something that i want to do okay so and it and it's based on calendar sales. Okay. So I've always wanted to like invest in the calendars, but then you have to invest in like $10,000 to get like a couple thousand of them. So this way it's not. So I wanted to know what is, how, how do you, how's your response with calendars? Yeah, that's the beauty of it. It's, it's a total mixed bag um, with no rhyme or reason to it, which to be honest with you is how this entire industry is and has been the entire time. Right. Um, I, and I and I say that to say, like, I'm a marketer by trade, right? And so a huge part of marketing is being analytical and looking at the data. And I look at the data all the time. And I look at the data all the time to try and extract the same sort of questions that you guys do, right? And what do you guys think about in your mind? Uh, what are the best selling uh, sizes? If I just know what the best selling size is and I do those, I'll be great. Or what is the best selling subject material? If I just know what the best selling subject material is, uh, I'll do great, right? Or what are the best selling media types? Or what are the what are the number one price points? These are the questions I get asked all the time, right? And I think there's just something in our human minds that we're like, okay, I just need to know what the formula is. And if I get the formula, I can apply it to my business and it'll be huge, right? And I, I go in and I study the data on all the various different customers. And despite the fact I know this doesn't work anymore, I still do it, right? Like, okay, if I just know 
what size or how many email subscribers this business has plus Facebook followers plus Instagram followers I can write a little mathematical equation tie that to their revenue and say here's what you need to get X amount of revenue right and I use this example on these sessions but we have a gal that has 5,500 followers on Instagram she has about the same size email list as another guy on our site that has 1.3 million followers on Instagram okay 1.3 million he's like a household name this gal outsells the guy 25 to 1. 25 to 1 is her revenue versus his revenue. And those little types of stories play out across the entire stack. And it's sort of a roundabout way to answer your question. Some people kill it with calendars, some people not at all, uh, and everything in between. There's still an awesome thing to add to your store, though, an awesome thing to be able to do because the way the technology has evolved is it is now 100% POD, zero minimums, right? Um, zero pre-orders. Uh, you get one order, the thing is made, it's shipped, off it goes. And I don't have one in front of me, I should. Um, I actually have somebody videoing all of them for me. But they're awesome. Not only can you do them, um, people can start them at any month that they want. Uh, you can set what you want the 12 images to be, or you can let them pick, um, and they can build their own. So we have all of those available, and very, very so easy. My idea with these is, is target marketing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I do little paintings of houses and things, you mm -hmm. know, but I do big, gigantic stuff too. But I, you know, for me personally, I like to do these little paintings of houses and whatnot yep. in the neighborhood and show the character of them. So one of my ideas is to go into, let's say, a, a particular neighborhood that has particularly nice looking houses. So mm -hmm. let's say there's maybe. 10,000 people that might, or I don't even know, maybe two or 3,000 people that maybe live in this neighborhood. So if I geared it towards that neighborhood of making it charming, how do you go about marketing to those people? Because they would be your buyers. Yep. So it's not like I'm selling it to the world. It's a target market. Yep. hundred um, percent. I'll say at a macro, and then I'm going to give you specific advice at a macro every artist has a marketing problem. That's what we teach all year long, right? That's our secret sauce. Right. It's less about the website. It's more about the marketing. In your particular instance, how would you target those people? There's a whole bunch of different ways. Uh, do you really want me to tell you what the most effective way is? Yeah. Okay. You, <laughs> you, you. I have to go in front of them. You, I got to knock on the door. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. I got you covered there. So what you're going to do is you are going to find the local roller hockey league in your town. You are going to get one of them that are really good on rollerblades. You are going to make little three by five postcard style sizes like this nice little um, you need to get your teeth cleaned. You're going to give these kids, um, ideally you get a couple of them if it's a 3,000 house neighborhood and you are going to come up with a set fee and you can get 3,000 of these made for $99. And they're going to door drop or mailbox drop every single solitary house in the neighborhood. That would be the first way I would go. The second way I would go is I would post on next door for that particular neighborhood. Next door is the neighborhood social sure. network. The third yeah. and final way is you could use geographically targeted Facebook ads, meaning you can draw a little circle around the town and only show ads to the people that are in there. But that's not very effective because not only will you get the homeowners, but you're going to get the pool guy that's in between pools looking on his phone. So it's not effective. The most effective by far uh, will be the kids on rollerblades going door to door. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Okay. Thanks. My pleasure, Sue. And you should sign up for no other reason that, and what, and look, again, I, I am the anti-salesperson. I am the anti-pushy salesperson. But what I'm saying, Sue, is you know you need to make a buying commitment, whether it's on us or someone else, so that you will force yourself to actually take the steps, right? We'll take the steps to start doing the marketing because guess what happens in your commission business? There's always another commission right around the corner and I'll start, I'll, I'll get started after this one and then another commission comes in. I'll get That's started exactly after what's this. Been I know, trust me, I know, I know, I know. So you gotta, you, you have to just force yourself in, in into shifting, into pivoting, otherwise, you know, the, don't get me wrong. The commission business can be amazing. It can be really, really interesting. And I'll, I'll show you one gal. I don't know why I'm talking. I'm going to pull her up that I think, you, I think you'd, you'd be interested in following. But the commission business, at the end of the day, you're sort of just trading dollars for hours, right? Exactly. And it, it's not right. that it can't be um, effective, okay? It can, 
but it doesn't scale. It's never going to, the only, the only way that you can increase that business is to constantly be increasing the prices. And my experience is that you sort of hit a shelf. You sort of hit a shelf in the whole thing, right? <coughs> I'm so sorry for the coughing, guys. I'm telling you, this is the worst cold I've ever had in my life. 14 days. Um, okay, I want to I show you this because I just I want to give you a for instance because it's interesting about the commission business. And then I see the questions from Rebecca, and there was one other person that I know that's got a question. Rochelle and Melody, don't worry, I'll get to you guys. But okay, Sue, track with me on this. I want you to see this. Okay, so I'm watching. Let me, so, oh, I opened it in the wrong window. Just bear with me here. Just stare at my countdown calendar. So... Her name's Allison Cantrell, right? And <laughs> they are very specific chalk and charcoal drawn dog dog commissions, okay? And mm -hmm. probably much like your world, it's very difficult right. for her to sell pictures of people, uh, pictures of a dog to general people. Meaning if I have a French bulldog, I don't go on here and look at a French bulldog and say, ooh, that's the one that I want, right? Because I want it specific to my dog, otherwise what's the point? So right. she came to us with the same level of frustration that you have in your voice and she's like i don't even know if i can do this anymore i'm so overwhelmed i'm so sick of it and she does this like limited edition launch thing like once a quarter and she kills it i mean she it blows my mind how well she does like 40 50 60 70 thousand dollar events when she opens it up and we trained her we taught her to get some people that can do a portion of the sketches for her and she just finishes them off right and so uh -huh. she's got a way. And so I, I think you should follow her. It's called bunnypigs.com. Just write that down because it's sort of specific to you. I think you should follow her. I think you should get on her email list. Uh, and it'll give you an example of someone that's commission-based like you, but that's actually turning it into a real business because she figured out something that worked for her. But she got started and she went at it, right? Which is, which is the same thing that you need to do. Like you got to start and, and don't take it as a, you have to sign up with us, but you got to get started or you're never going to get started. There's no, never, there's never going to be a good time to do it, Sue, ever. You got to okay, rip, the, you. rip the bandaid off. <laughs> you know? That's true. That's yeah. true. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Sue. Okay. I'm going to go to Rochelle and then it'll be Melody and then Rebecca. I see your questions. I'll get you too. Don't worry. Um, go ahead, Rochelle. Hi there. Thanks for uh, having me on. Oh, my and, pleasure. Um, really great stuff. So I had a couple of questions. Quick, wait, wait, quick um, question. Quick question because I'm curious. Are you in an RV? I am not. I'm actually in my home. It looks awesome, that curtain. It looks like I've got a, I have an, I have an RV that I read it last weekend and the curtains look the exact same and it was luxurious. I was like, <laughs> what are you rolling around in, Rochelle? I want to see it. Uh, anyway, go um, ahead. I, no. And I've had that same nasty 14, 14 day cold just for the record. And I caught it when I was in California last week. So yeah, that's where I am. By the way, how is this the most brutal thing you've had in a long time? I've, I haven't had something yes. this brutal in like 10 years. Like go away. It's I think tomorrow is going to be 14 days for me. I never yeah. get sick. That's uh. about where I'm at. And I also got a COVID test because I was, I was terrified. Really concerned. Yeah, I was terrified. Yeah. So, I sold a large painting um, this last year. It was the, one of the first big paintings that I had sold, like three by four feet, um, to a woman in Boise, Idaho. Okay. And what I'm wondering is, do you find that most people add the shipping cost to the base price of the piece, or is that something that's figured afterwards? Because that kind of became a thing. Yeah, you have a you have a you have a great deal of flexibility in in how you want to do it. Some people some people raise the prices and just build it into it just to make it simple like that. But one of the good things is, thank God for this too, by the way, art and photography, for whatever reason, has not been Amazonified just yet. And, and, I, and I say that with the experience of a huge customer base, right? Meaning the expectation is not there when you buy art or photography, especially directly from the artist, that you automatically get free shipping. And especially not on the bigger stuff where you need the crate and the whole thing and everything else. So I think... The key to it is just sort of over communicating early on, letting them know that shipping is already built into the price and, and how involved the shipping is or saying it's not built into the price. OK, or or what I love is build it into the price. OK, and so let's just say what, what did it cost you to ship that thing to Idaho? Just tell me three three hundred and thirty dollars. OK, so three hundred and thirty dollars. So build it into the price. So let's say you were going to sell the thing for $3,000. you are now selling the thing for $3,330. Then what I do is 
taking something away at the end, an incentive, and having something to give them gets sales over the line. It just does, okay? It just does. So let's just say that the price was 3000 Your shipping was already built in. Say, okay, Rachel, I love that you love this. Um, it's going to cost probably three or $400 to ship because I have to crate it up and do everything else. The shipping's already built into the price. But I'll tell you what. I, it seems like you really like this piece and you really want it. If I knocked off the shipping, would you take it today? And then shut up. And then what always happens is, you know what? I would. I would. If you knocked off the shipping, if you shipped to me for free, I will take it today and I'll pay today. And then you're covered, right? You covered your butt. Right. But you can also you can also just you know say shipping TBD, right? And just make it clear that you're going to get a quote on shipping and that's what it's going to be. But you definitely don't want to lose the sale over it. But Trust me, I understand being in a position where you're like, you sold it. You were so excited to sell it. Oh, my gosh, that was awesome. And you didn't even think about the shipping. And then it's like, oh, crap. There goes my margins. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah. And I, and I hope this thing, you're about done with this thing. Ugh. Ugh. Terrible cold. Terrible cold. Yeah. Um, okay, Melody, you're up next. Go ahead, Melody. Are you there, Melody? You'll have to hit the microphone icon, bottom left-hand corner. Okay, Melody looks like having mic issues. I'll see if you can fix it. I'll, all you have to do is just hit the thing and then say something, and I'll know you got it. Um, Rebecca on Facebook is asking – well, sorry. Uh, one more question. Are you able to share with the artist what is selling? Like, if I did this, I'd be curious specifically what art is selling also, which which will be going over price and structured. Um, yeah, that's not how it works, sadly, Rebecca. Um, you know, you, you, the, you, what you have to figure out, especially because you're just getting started, is you have to figure out if you have a product that the market actually wants. And the only way to figure out um, if you have a product that the market actually wants is to actually try and sell it yourself. The easiest way to do this in pre-COVID times uh, was you're a photographer, shoot some stuff, get it printed, go get a booth somewhere, start having conversations with strangers and see if anybody wants to purchase it. If they do, awesome, you're in business. Uh, you have a marketing problem at that point. If, you, if it doesn't though, you know you, you've got a product that the market doesn't want and that's not a, a death knell um, or, a, or a value statement on who you are as a photographer or how good you are or anything like that. But it just means you have a product the market doesn't want and you have to try something new. And everyone, everyone's tendency, especially people just getting started or artists and photographers and, and you know, even just human beings, um, as, it, as it applies to criticism, is like you create something. It's usually you create something that you wanted to create because it makes you happier. It's what you like or what inspires you. You go and try and sell it one time. Uh, you don't get the response that you're after. And you're like, oh my gosh. I'm a terrible artist. Uh, I was right. My mom was right. This will always just be a hobby. And you self-internalize it. You make it all about you that you're not good enough, this, that, or the other, right? And I see that happen all the time. I also see happen all the time the you quit after you've even, before you've even gotten started. Like you showed the work to like two people. They didn't buy it. And you're like, I'm a failure. So you have to show the work to a, a decent enough clip of people why it's so great to get a booth right? Um, because you get to have conversations with 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 or 70 people. And I'm like, look, if none of them buy, okay, you've got an issue. But even if none of them buy, dirty little secrets of the art industry. Pablo Picasso, one of the greatest artists of all time, when he died, had 45,000 unsold works in his inventory. 45,000 of one of the greatest artists of all time, okay? Anything that had his name on it in the tail end of his years would have sold in two seconds, okay? But what was he doing that entire time? Sometimes he was creating stuff that the market didn't want. And guess what? He tried to sell it. The market told him no, and he's like, I'm not going to do that again. And then he went and created something else. And then he went and created something else. And you realize that this business, this game, comes down to how many different arrows you fire, right? you got to fire a whole bunch of different arrows to hit the bullseye. And no one ever tells you that ahead of time. So that's the ball game. But Rebecca, you have to get your art in front of eyeballs. Until you do that, uh, you'll never know if you have a product the market wants or don't. So pre-pandemic and in some places still, easiest way to do that is just get your art, get your photography in front of people via booth, at a show, a farmer's market, whatever. Uh, strangers is the key. Um, 
And, you know, if COVID times come back, you use one of these, you go live on the social media networks, and you have a live art show like I showed at the beginning of this presentation. And that's, that's how you go about doing it. Um, okay, there are some other questions in the chat. Justin, you've got one. I'm going to unmute you, Justin, because I want to make sure I understand this question. Oh, I don't know. I think Justin bounced out of here. I don't see his name in here. Let me see if I type Justin. Yeah, I think he's gone. So his question was, in the world of standing out quick, does ad spend on Facebook marketing help in rapid growth? If so, what strategy is most useful? No. Until you know your art can sell, Justin, in case you watched the replay on this, um, I don't want you touching Facebook ads. And 99 out of 100 artists and photographers fail at Facebook ads uh, because they don't understand how art sells. Uh, they don't understand how to run ads on Facebook. They start boosting posts. They're not doing normal marketing, a million different reasons. So don't, don't do that unless you're an expert at it already. Um, Cynthia, this is a good question. How many pieces do you recommend you get started with? One, one. You are ready to go with one. And I'm gonna unmute you, Cynthia, so we can talk about it. Um, the reason I say one, Cynthia, is what everyone tends to do, okay, and this is sort of a, a variant of the advice I gave Sue earlier, is what everyone t tends to do is say, okay, I'll just get started when I have X amount of prints or I have X amount of pieces, right? And maybe it's 10 or maybe it's 15, maybe it's 20, maybe it's 30, whatever number they come up with. And I'll just get started when I get that work photographed so it's ready for reproduction, right? And do you know what ends up happening? V days turn into weeks, turn into months, turn into years, and nothing ever gets done. No one ever takes any positive forward steps to attempt to grow the business. And so one piece is enough to start. What you're gonna do is you're gonna get it up on the website, and then when you get a second piece, that's gonna become a marketing moment. Uh, you're gonna be able to tell everybody, hey, I added a new piece to my store, and you're gonna get on with it, and you're gonna actually start working towards taking positive steps in the business. And so that's sort of how we approach that um, and look at that. Okay, AJ, I see your question. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring on Brooke and then I'll get to yours and then Hank, I see yours as well. So um go ahead, Brooke. I'll move my uh can you hear me? Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> okay, uh we uh we have a family uh we business mm -hmm. that we started. Okay. Um we also did a uh we did awesome at a uh uh our first festival. Cool. And my thing is, we have not went to Instagram yet. Okay. Uh, we have a lot of prints mm -hmm. that we're just sitting on, kind of. Uh, what's the big thing with Instagram? Because we're, we're on we're on uh, Facebook, mm -hmm. and we're also we're blowing up on um, uh, doing videos like you know the hyper speed videos yep. and stuff on uh. uh TikTok. Yeah. But what is the diff what's the big thing about Instagram? I think and I, then, Yeah, I think I think just in marketing fundamentally, it's sort of like fishing, right? Like our job yeah. is to load the boat up and then go where the fish are. So mm -hmm. in in our world, it's attention, right? So we have to go where the attention is and Instagram is a massive platform. They have a ton of attention, so it makes a lot of sense to be marketing there. More 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 so to be honest with you even than TikTok. TikTok's okay. But TikTok, you know, vastly inflates the views and likes and comments and shares, which is total BS. And then two, because the audience, yeah. because the audience skews so low on TikTok, just mathematically, they're not as qualified art buyers uh, that are on Facebook and Instagram. So that's what I would say. So it's we probably need to branch out into Instagram. Yes, 100 percent. Like you say, you say you're doing well with the videos. And I have no doubt you're basing that on the fact, <coughs> excuse me. That you're getting a ton of likes and a ton of comments and a ton of shares but if i drove to your town uh with that lovely southern draw what sounds like a southern draw anyway and i picked I you can say. where where I can... <laughs> from tennessee okay so if i drove to your house in tennessee right now brooke picked you up drove you down to the local atm and i said brooke show me the button on that machine for likes comments shares TikTok views uh, uh blowing up on TikTok. The button doesn't exist because I don't think I don't think it's fundamentally driving a tremendous amount of sales for your business. I might be wrong about that, but do you feel like it's fundamentally driving a tremendous amount of sales for your business, TikTok? No, it, I mean no. it's just getting the name out there, and people yeah. are loving it, but there's no sales coming from it. Exactly, exactly. So everything that we do 
And it, the reason that I can make those blanket calls like that is, again, I don't know if you saw the beginning of the presentation, but I've got 5,700 customers and I study, and I study their data, right? And so it's, it's, it's a really cool thing that we're able to do, our storefronts as a business, is say, okay, everything that we do in marketing is a question of ROI, return on investment to the time, energy, and treasure that you, you put forth to whatever, right? So my job all the time is to go in and look at the data and say, who are the ones that are actually making money and building real businesses, and what are their traffic sources? And what that allows me to do is make these types of value judgments where I could say, Brooke, do not waste another second on TikTok. Put all of that energy towards Instagram because you're gonna get a much higher ROI out of your time if you start doing that, right? I can say that conclusively because I have years and years and years of data spread over thousands and thousands and thousands of artists, and I see the traffic that comes to TikTok and it doesn't convert. And it's not a knock on TikTok, just like the fact I hate the platform. I think it's owned by communist China. But I'm contrarian. If it was delivering results for my customers, I would go become an expert at it and teach them all how to do it. I just believe, depending on your artwork and price point, right? Like you might have artwork that's tailored to the younger generation. But if you've got artwork that's not tailored and has the higher price points, it makes much more sense to spend the available hours that you do have on Facebook and Instagram because I see a tremendous volume of sales coming as a result of that. I don't see it on TikTok just yet. And they're very, very good at giving you the dopamine hits of, wow, people are loving my stuff and watching it and sharing it, right? Which is not to say it, it doesn't help for brand awareness and that you can't you know, move the attention from TikTok onto your email list and help with marketing, you can. But I would prefer that you spend more time marketing on the other platforms because I know there's more qualified buyers there. Okay, and one more question. Um, we did a we do fan art, okay. so so like their um their charcoal portraits mm -hmm. and then watercolor. Okay, and we have a series of music musicians and a series of horror. Mm -hmm. We have like Ash from Evil Dead, Freddy Krueger. We have Dolly Parton. Okay, uh, you know it just list goes on. We sold the original. Willie Nelson mm -hmm. at the art fair. Awesome. Okay. Does that, when we sell an original piece, does the print price, should it go up? Not, ne not necessarily. I mean, I think, again, this is one of those things where there's not really a, a, a right way or a wrong way to do it because I've seen so many different iterations of it. Normally the question gets asked like, okay, if I sell an original, do I need to have some sort of legal agreement with the purchaser of the original that I'm still able to sell prints, right? And I get that question a lot. Um, I think the minute you sell the, the, yeah, the minute that you sell the original, I mean, technically you're supposed to maintain the rights. Like, you know, you have them sign a contract that says you own the original, but we, the artist maintains the, the ability to produce uh, the prints in perpetuity, right? Or you could say, mm -hmm. okay, this is the original, it's a thousand bucks. Uh, we retain the rights to run prints of this. If you don't want us to do that, it's another thousand bucks, right? We can do that game. Um, but the owner of the original, I, I, I like the model, the owner of the original is a person that you want to take care of. You want to cultivate as many of those as possible because the price points on the originals are significantly higher than anything else. And so the owner of the original should be thrilled that prints are happening because all that does is make the original more valuable, right? Like, you know, how many prints of Starry Night are sold in museum galleries here, there, and everywhere? A lot. Does that change the value of the original? No, it just keeps going up because more and more people are like, oh my gosh, I want to see the original. So that's what I would say. Okay, that's awesome. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much. Yep, my pleasure. Um, and you should definitely look into us because if you're doing that well, we can help you. Uh, definitely. Uh, we are trying to find more avenues and the best, because it's a my my sons they're artists too. I love and the family affair. Yeah, I love it. You could, you could rock the family gallery. Men, and it's awesome. They sold they my my youngest sold more than I did. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah, I'm, I I I see a family gallery forming. A family gallery. I, I I like it though. That's that's cool. Okay. Well, awesome. I will. Uh, so I can just get in with you and email you and yeah the, the the next thing to do is like request a demo we'll throw you some links in the chat it's essentially you, you get a test drive the whole software solution see it all and you can see how it, it would potentially help your business but i think you know in a lot of ways if if the show and fair circuits are working and they're doing well 
Um, there are fantastic ways to sell art. We, 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 love, we love the show in Third Circuit. What we find is most of the time artists and photographers don't understand the proper marketing techniques and tactics to best take advantage of the show in Third Circuit. And what do I mean? It's a hit or miss process, right? You have your booth fees. Uh, if it's not local, you're driving somewhere, you're staying in a hotel, you're setting everything up, you're loading the car up, da, 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 da. and it can be hit or miss, right? Some are home runs, some are not. To maximize the shows, you have to be capturing emails all show long. And there's, there's ways to do that, that, that we teach you how to do that. Then you have to give something away um, is the incentive to capture those emails. Then after the show ends, there's one winner, everyone else gets a discount for the stuff that they didn't buy, they can come back at it, right? And what you'll find is that once you bolt that type of marketing uh, acumen, for lack of a better term, into your show in Thera Circuit, you'll get significantly more ROI out of each one that you do. And you'll capture more email addresses, which is even more important that you can market again and again and again in the future. So. Yeah, trust That's me. That's what I've not done is the email, getting the email. I, I, that I did not think that no one, was such no one a does. big. Yeah, no one does. It's huge. It's, it's it night is. and day. It's huge. Yeah, it's night and day. I, we have a significant, well, again, it's sort of calmed down a little bit because of COVID, right? Although it's, it's come back in certain areas. But we have a significant amount of customers that will lose money on the show. And then as a result of the marketing activities over the next week and a half, two weeks, pay the booth off and then some right and so you want to give yourself that ability just in case because you know you you start doing the shows and fairs and inevitably summer hits and inevitably summer duds that's just how it goes right um and so you want to you want to be able to maximize the roi of everyone but yeah we can help well okay so i did a uh, one more question i did yeah. a uh, I did a like a week giveaway <laughs> yep. of different prints before we did the festival just to get people's attention mm -hmm. to come and see us you know mm -hmm. And it seemed to work. Yeah. It seemed to work really well. Uh, so is that something that yes. we yes. should do before each yes. festival? It's something you should probably? do at each festival. Add, do it at the festival? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of doing it on Facebook. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, my pleasure, Rick. Okay. All right, Melody, you're up next. Go ahead, Melody. Hello? Yeah, you're, you're, you sound a little faint, but I'm going to try and pump up the volume. Go ahead. Hello? Okay, so um, I wanted to ask if I were to sell my arts at home, like a garage sale, yep. would that work? Yeah, 100%. You'll never know until you try, though. Could work. I shouldn't say it will work. <laughs> Uh, you, you'll never know until you try. Yeah, one of my one of my favorite um, things. Well, one of the things that I do every weekend is my my damn kids are addicted to these cinnamon rolls. Okay, and it's from like a bakery that's like a little bit far away from my house. And you know, it's I wouldn't go there every morning. The place is fantastic. I wouldn't go there every morning though to get my coffee, despite the fact I love their coffee because it's like a little bit out of the way. And so my jam is every Saturday, every Sunday, I jump on my bike. First thing, I have like an electric bike that I like riding. I live in California. There's no season, so I got to do it all year long. And I go riding down this street. And there's like, it's sort of like a main thoroughfare in my town. And on the right-hand side, there is an artist. And his, his, his thing that he's got working for him is that his house is right on this main street. And every Saturday, every Sunday, you know what he does? opens his garage and gets all of his easels and puts them all over the driveway and just has all his artwork there. So he's just basically running, you know, a bootleg gallery out of his driveway every Saturday and Sunday because he lives on a good, a good high traffic street, right? And it works for him. So yeah, go for it. Give it a shot, Melody. You'll never know until you try. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. My pleasure. Um, okay. Hank, you had a question. Let me pull Hank's deal in here. So Hank says, um, I sell graphic prints. They are printed, framed, and shipped by a second party. So you recommend vendors that do that? Yes, uh, we certainly do. We have vendors that do that. Uh, the last thing that you want to be doing is worrying about printing or shipping or any of that admin nonsense. We automate all of that. Um, the way it works with us is you sign up, you get a merchant account. Um, all our customers use the same one. It's one called Stripe. It's huge. And what happens is, is that it connects directly to your bank account. An order comes in. This is some of the stuff they'll show you on the demo. But it connects to your bank account, an order comes in, you get paid, printer gets paid, printer prints your order, boxes your order, slaps your logo on the side of it, 
ships it to the customer. You touch nothing, nothing at all. Um, and we, we, we have a whole bunch of stuff set up like that such that you can spend all that time on the number one problem that you do have, which is your marketing problem, right? Uh, which is what everybody needs to fix. So that's what I would say, Hank. Um, yeah. Okay, I see, AJ, that you had a question. I'm scrolling back up to try and find it. Best way to sell portraits, no hits on my website. Yeah, because you're probably not marketing consistently, AJ, um, which is just what it comes down to. But I'm going to unmute you, AJ, if you want to talk about it. What kind of portraits do you do? And if you want to talk, AJ, you just have to hit the mic in the bottom left-hand corner. I'll let you know when you get it. Are you there, AJ? Okay, it looks like he's trying to figure it out. All right, well, good session today, guys. Any any uh, final questions? Uh, we'll give AJ a minute, see if he wants to, to sort his microphone issue. Otherwise, any final questions? Yeah, David, so I can tell you, I can tell you, David's asking like what the costs are briefly, so. The way that we explain the costs and everything else, like we're a website company like everyone else is. So there's a monthly fee for the website. Um, that, that goes without question. Where we differ is we sort of realized early on that if we wanted to have a successful business, a website's not enough. Meaning no one on this call has a website problem. Meaning if I tried to, if I just showed up, I'm the genie, I just came out of the lamp, uh, my fat belly, the little shoes, the whole thing, and I said, where do you want me to move your website to? David, I'll move it right now. I'll move it right now. I can move it to any service provider you want, anyone you pick, and nothing would change in your business because you don't have a website problem, you have a marketing problem. So we realized we had to solve the marketing problem. So what do we do to solve the marketing problem? Again, this is what they show you in the demo, but we give you a 365 day a year calendar. Tells you what to do every single solitary day and week to market your art and photography. Then uh, we have a bunch of do-it-yourself uh, education that we call playbooks, how to run a sale, how to run Facebook ads, how to do a live art show, how to do a live art show on Instagram, how to do a live art show on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at the same time. All of the various different things. Then we take the entire customer base, we split it up into two, people that have sold less than $2,000 on their site, people that have sold more than $2,000 on their site, and we put you into weekly Zoom sessions just like this. Uh, we teach you, we go over whatever we should be doing, uh, we bring everyone on for Q&A, uh, we get everyone going in the right direction and uh, figuring out their marketing, uh, as well as support six days a week and all these various different things. So all of that is a way to explain why we charge what we charge. Our entry level plans are $999 down, which goes to pay for all the people that are going to teach you marketing for the rest of your natural born life. And then uh, the website fee is just a monthly fee, and I believe it starts at $39 or $49 a month. Um, but they can tell you more about that on the demo and they know all the plans and pricing and deals and everything else. So if you are interested, David, request the demo. The outreach team will reach out and it's a 10 minute call. You can ask all like the detailed questions about pricing um, that I don't know because I don't know all the plans and everything else. And then, you know, if you want to see the whole demo, you can. Or if you're like, no, nah, I don't want to do this right now, then, you know, they won't bother you again. But that's how you get into all the pricing. But, you know, none of you guys have website problems. You all have marketing problems. And if you want a big business, that's what we have to solve. And essentially, that's what we do. Um, that's what we do. Kate, I saw you had your hand up, and then it looked like you took it down. I'm going to unmute you anyway just to make sure because um, we're getting to the end of the session. Go ahead, Kate, if you're there. Hi, Patrick. Hey. Um, yeah, I, I live in New York City. Okay. And I've been painting since 1994, Amazing. I guess. Amazing. And it's just been a part of my, I guess, for lack of a better word, healing process. Okay. I'm on Instagram. And I have, I've thought from time to time that maybe I should just take some of my original works to my local East Village Park and just put them up against the, the, um, uh, garden rail yep and just see what happens i am 1000 percent on board with this really mm -hmm. i'm kind of terrified actually because i, I see other people i recommend a strong there. white wine before you go down there or whatever, <laughs> or whatever it takes okay and and go for it take a take a friend along for moral support and probably security right what um, kind of what kind of uh, um what kind of my works? I mean, I, I do all different kinds. Should I bring 
uh, the folders of my paperwork? Should I bring some canvas? Uh... Yeah, I think I think so. The way to think about it is the best thing that you can do, in my opinion. And again, this is this is hit or miss, right? The the you know what the best thing you can do in all of this is do it five times. Yeah. Is do it five times. But let's just table that for a second. What I would what I would advise you doing, like you know, let's let's just say that you know I'm your counselor on this situation. I'm gonna be like, okay, this is the first time you've done it. It's gonna be out of park. Uh, we're gonna want to make sure, at the very least, we have some some price point variability. Meaning, don't just go down there with like your four biggest originals that all start at three thousand dollars. That's a pretty hard sale in a park. But yeah. have a couple of smaller pieces. Have some things that you can let go for fifty, a couple hundred bucks, in, all the way up to two or three nice originals it would be more than that right and i would show up and i would say are you married by the way okay no. well let's just say you're married um or, or or just say whatever and you say my roommate my husband has said if i don't move some of this work they are going to kill me okay no reasonable authors are refused just let me know you know we're downsizing we're contemplating moving out to long island i guess that would be upsizing um but you know give it give it some incentive that it really has to move right and your job well, your... i have been i have been decluttering my house see there we go and so i was thinking maybe this is another angle to think about how to gain more space back because i've got i moved on to doing paperwork because mm -hmm. just the mere storage in my 550 square foot um rent stabilized apartment is is getting get, um, getting slim. Yes, yes, and you need to clear up some space. Uh, you just read the magic of tidying up by Marie Kondo, and she has told you that you must uh, uh, move this stuff right away because it doesn't bring you joy anymore. Or whatever the, the you know no, what I about? didn't actually read that. I actually huh. hired a woman who lives on the Upper West Side, and she came to my house, and and I'm telling you, it was like Painful. it was like an emotional. Yeah. Uh, yeah. tooth pulling yes you know yes i love but this good good yeah. i'm sitting in a place now that has more space in my workspace so she, she made it's you awesome. get she made you get rid of that stuff you hoarder we're all hoarders by the way i totally yeah, well, totally i inherited to some stuff and so mm -hmm. believe me i moved out the the large amount of it but you know once i got tired i just like, crammed it in the corner like i can't handle it anymore anyway yep 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 i would yeah i, I would just go and do it and you know, really what you're looking to do, you know, is sell any of it, right? And so quote the price and say, if, and see what they have to say. And if they're like, ah, that's a little bit rich for my blood, say, all right, make me an offer. And then shut up and see, right? Doesn't mean you have to sell it, but always say, make me an offer and see if they're willing to actually offer something. If they're willing to offer something, you're in business. You just have to look and see what the price points are. But yes, I 100% think you should do it. Not only that, I want you to take a cell phone shot of you doing it and send it to me. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to hunt you down an email and harass you until you do it, right? Because I want you to, I want you to take action. I want you to give it a shot. And I think, I, think it's a, I think it's a brilliant idea. Okay. All right. Oh, my God. So weekend is a good time, yes. would you say? Do you know what time is a good time? Any time that you get off your butt and you go do it, right? Uh, like, you got to just psych yourself up and go do it. But, yes, the weekend, like the highest traffic time would definitely be the best time. And definitely plan to hang for a couple hours and just see what kind of conversations you can get in. Uh-huh. All of it might okay. sell, Kate. Every single solitary piece of it might sell, right? You, you'll, you'll never so know until you get out there and do it. Paperworks that are like either 9 by 11 or 14 by 17. Yes. You know, what, 50 to to $100? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just pick the prices. doesn't matter. Whatever you're comfortable with and be willing to negotiate and see how you do. Okay. No, o right. no overthinking any of it. The only thing that you need to 100% commit to doing is, is packing that stuff up, going down there, hanging out and having a bunch of conversations. Don't worry about anything else other than that. Okay, deep breath. Thank I know, you. I know, I know. Appreciate it. Yes, do it. April, make me a note to follow up with Kate one week. I want to see whether or not she's done it. I'm writing you an email. <laughs> okay, please. All right. Thank you. All right, my pleasure. Good luck. Bye. Um, okay, what else? Yeah, Rebecca, software does that for you. It tells you in two seconds what sizes you can go. It'll, it'll let you know just based on the, the resolution of the photo. You don't even have to do anything. It happens in one sec. Um, uh, I feel like losing my voice again. Sickness has got to go away. Guys, great session today. Thank you.
Highly recommend you all get a demo. If you're interested in this, if you're interested, if everything that I've said, you're like, okay, these people sound like they know what they're talking about. I think they can actually help me grow a business, which we believe to be the case. Go and get the demo and at least look at it. If you look at the demo and you decide, yeah, it's not for me, our people will never harass you again. It's not that type of sale, but we have a huge sale going on right now until the end of the month because uh, we want everyone to get ready because Q4 is coming. So much art is sold in Q4, it's crazy. So you want to be prepared for that. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. No, I think that's it. Other than that, everyone have fantastic weekends. Brooke, elevate your elevate your show game. Very important, very important. Um, oh, I see Melody, sorry. I didn't see you still had your hand up. Go ahead, Melody. Are you there, Melody? Unmute, Melody. You had it, and then I think you lost it. Hello? Yes. Okay. So my question is, should I sell abstract art? It's up to you if you want to or if you don't want to. I think I think you should first try to sell what you've already created. Um, okay. That's what you should do. Okay. And my second question is, should I buy a 3D printer to make copies of my canvas art and drawing? I wouldn't, no. I think that's a big investment unless you really want to get into 3D printing and you have a passion for it. I probably wouldn't do that, no. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Molly. Okay, on that note, everybody have a good weekend. Thanks for, thanks for stopping by. Enjoyed the session. Request a demo if you're interested. If not, don't worry. We're not going anywhere. We'll be around. Uh, and I hope to see you uh, either on the inside or on a future session. Bye, everybody. Have a great weekend.